Welcome, classmates, to our presentation on the art of legislative politics by Tom Loftus. Go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, get comfortable, and join us as we talk about this book. Let's talk about the major themes. At first glance, it seems to be like any other book we've read during the course of this degree. But after we read it, we uh, learned that it was a look at the art of politics inside state government. An inside look at that. He writes so effortlessly and free of the typical political jargon. Anybody outside of politics could understand it. Along the way, he tells some interesting stories about the powers and abilities of being a legislator and the speaker. He said the speaker's power derives itself from relationships with his own colleagues, minority leaders, the governor, and lobbyists. He also refers to another relationship, the speaker's responsibility to preserve the independence and veracity of the legislature. He often speaks in length about the governor and the legislature having uneven contest with bill passage. It's primarily due to the governor's veto in part power, which was upheld by the Wisconsin Supreme Court. He says it best when he says, the governor could write a new law simply by playing a one-man game of Scrabble. He goes into more detail on the internal workings of the state legislature. One example of this was when he explains that even in a state with the toughest campaign laws in the nation, why these campaign financing limits and government assistance do not work. In chapters dealing with abortion, gun control, and the teachers' union, he explains the role of interest groups during the process and how the speaker attempts to finesse potentially explosive battles inside the assembly. He notes that improper lobbying can occur even in Wisconsin, which has the nation's strictest lobbying control law. He makes it clear that lobbyists do not buy votes, but they spend money and do favors in order to create access. And he believes that ethical behavior is fostered by three things. Tough laws and their enforcement, leaders who set good example, and the fear that the Capitol Press Corps would expose any misbehavior. This is a very informative and readable book. He takes the reader inside the assembly and explains how things work in an understandable fashion. This is the book to read if you want to know some things about how state government works. What makes him so reliable? What makes him such an important source? Well, he's homegrown. Served 14 years in the state assembly. In 1981, he was elected to be the Democratic majority leader. His colleagues recognized his skill, his high character, and they voted him to become assembly speaker. He served in that capacity until he retired in 1991. He also oversaw some of the most progressive legislation in the history of Wisconsin. It's legislation that dealt with abortion, child support reform. In 1988, he even successfully defeated the strong-arm lobbyists of the NRA. As a progressive liberal, he was able to form friendships and popularity across both sides of the political spectrum. In 1987, Tom and Governor Bill Clinton worked together on the Child Supporting Withholding Bill. In 1992, Tom was chosen chair of Clinton's Wisconsin presidential campaign. And after Bill Clinton became president, he named Loftus U.S. Ambassador to Norway. The role of representative is the same no matter what state. To work the position, you have to understand its responsibilities. Lofton explains that the duties of a representative or to serve the will of the constituents. He writes, I believed it was my duty to carry out this directive. He shares personal experiences and examples from the legislature. He takes lessons and makes them applicable to any state. He says that every legislator first must be a candidate and explains the challenges, both to first-time runners all the way up to incumbents. Campaigning is a battle fought in arenas of every state. Loftus gives tricks and insights that could aid candidates. One important lesson is target, targeting voters. To maximize campaign resources and cut wasted time and money on non-voters or non-supporters, it's important to use Loftus' label system and target those A1 voters. An essential topic useful to any state politician comes in understanding the rules, process, and relationships that play out in state government. He gives the example of asking a colleague for a vote. In the scenario, the candidate uses his friendship and flattery, referencing the weight of his support. 
The importance is placed on hearing an assured yes by the colleague, and the candidate seals the deal by agreeing he owes the colleague a favor later on. Relationships such as this occur nationwide, and Loftus expresses their value on forming groups that band together in voting. He goes on to write about some controversial issues, highlighting strong interest groups and lobbyists that appear in every state. Pro-life, pro-choice, NRA, they're all present nationwide. And he provides tactics of strategic considerations and collective bargaining rights to battle powerful interest groups. He shares insight on how to work with these powerful groups and have the ability to sway votes. He describes his tactics as swinging close up with a baseball bat. He advises to strike first, contact these interest groups, and make your position clear. He goes on to document some long battles that he had against the NRA, presses the importance of using the media first to spread your position. Loftus describes his time in the legislature and how it was influenced by a number of factors unique to Wisconsin's politics. First, fitting in with Elazar's typology, the state has a strong moral political culture in which the government is seen as a positive force working for the common good. Second, there is a high degree of accountability in Wisconsin government and a very high voter turnout, which is well above the national average. For these reasons, Wisconsin state government is very receptive to its constituents' views and influence, and ethical standards are high. He describes in his book that Wisconsin has a not even a cup of coffee rule. Lobbyists cannot give anything of value to legislators, even as small as a cup of coffee. I think that's why the scandal he describes was so upsetting to voters in the state. Wisconsin was the birthplace of both the Republican Party and the Progressive Party. It also has a long history of state and local legislators who become members of the Socialist Party. The rural-urban divide also heavily influences state politics. The north and western part of the states are generally more conservative and racially homogeneous than the southeast. For these reasons, legislative leaders need to be particularly skilled at bringing about compromise from strongly opposite views. By virtue of the role that he played in the state assembly, he was able to personalize the special role and pressures that the legislative leadership played in shaping public policy outcomes. The ability to shape these outcomes not only had to do with his ability to move legislation from committee to committee, but he maneuvered it through the floor, through debate, in the vote. But he also talked about his relationship to the whole body. The speaker sets the tone, whether it's partisan or bipartisan, the ethical tone, he determines whether they will work collaboratively or whether it will be winner take all. He said it's the responsibility of the speaker to represent the institution in relation to the other chamber and to the executive branch. The strong effect of public perception and the process of how the legislature works can cut across state lines. He gives an example of where major the majority leader decides to publicly fight against corruption charges. He said that decision was arrogant and it made the whole body look arrogant as a whole. It affected the legislature, legislature's ability to pass the changes to the ethics code. Daniel Elazar described the political culture as a particular pattern of orientation to the political action in which each political system is embedded. The morally dominant political culture and its subtleties are unique to Wisconsin, but the lessons learned informs legislative intent, defines relationships between legislators and their constituents, and helps evolve the process and rules as an important lesson that can be applied to any state legislature. Understanding how the culture evolved and continues to evolve in your own state is essential in learning how to navigate the state legislature as the intent, process, and relationships are all based on the central cog. In conclusion, you can see that Loftus presents a very unique perspective Relationships are key, and to have the influence to get things done, you have to understand and work with the state's political culture, process, and key players and rules. Our first discussion question is this. From the main points of the art of legislative politics, what lessons can you apply to a situation in your state? The 
the second discussion question. Lofta states that a state's political culture can be improved by spelling out in law the borders of acceptable behavior, but also concedes that laws do not make saints out of miracles. Do you believe that the political culture of a state can be significantly changed through legislative reforms? If so, what key legislative reforms would make the most impact? I want to thank you for being a part of our presentation. I wish you well on answering the discussion questions. Uh, this last slide, you'll be able to see the sources that we used. You guys have a real good night. We'll talk to you again soon.